It's J.D. Pincus from Asheville, North Carolina. You're listening to the Mm-Mm Brutally Delicious Podcast. One, two, three, four. The Brutally Delicious Podcast. How are you, my friend? I'm all right, man. Where are you located at? I'm in Richmond, Virginia. Not too far from you, right? You're in the Carolinas. Oh, okay. I hope you weren't at that graduation the other night. Uh, I'm going to tell you a, a story. I actually, in my real world job, I am a police dispatcher, and I actually work for VCU where that happened. Oh, my God. Holy shit, dude. Yeah, luckily. That must have been a no, so, so I'm going to tell you, luckily, I didn't have, I was off that night. I had gotten off already at four o'clock and it happened around five something. So I missed it, but I know a lot of people that are. Officer, my condolences, man. I didn't mean to make light of it by any Oh, reason, no, man. not at all. No, it's, it's right in my backyard and I actually work there. So it's pretty fucked up. Damn, man. I love Richmond. It's a shame to see that shit happen up there. Man. It's weird, and I know this has nothing to do with what we're here for, but it's weird. You only see it happen on the news, and it, you know it's always somewhere else. And it yeah. still sucks, and you still feel it, but you don't feel it as much as, holy shit, it's in my yard. Yeah, I think uh, it hits me more when I see the uh, surviving family members of these anonymous people that got killed. Yeah. And you know, realize what it would be like if something happened like that to my kid or something, you know? Right. Yeah, uh, that's. Uh, I don't think people understand that a lot of times. They just separate themselves from the issues and don't don't see the humanity in it. You know, you are one hundred percent right. But anyway, thank you for joining me. Usually, I have a partner with me, but he had uh, some difficulty today with his internet or something. But we had Paul Leary on a couple weeks ago, or a couple months ago, and we had a blast. We're both butthole surfer fans, so it's really nice to to see you. I know this is not metal, but this is kind of like a guilty pleasure. I love this. Yeah, I, I, I checked out some of your metal stuff on there. I was like, well, I don't know, maybe he's got the wrong JD Pinkus for something. No, no, no. We're just fans. <laughs> and you know what? I think even though it's a metal show and you know we're metal heads, I kinda like good music and stuff outside of the box, which I think your stuff fits, right? It's definitely outside the box. It's definitely outside the box. <laughs> well, I know my band Honky did play with uh you know, we toured with Down and stuff. I guess that's that's kind of what metal is nowadays. Oh. But we're not <laughs> We weren't really a metal band per se, but we had, our guitar player was a metal player, so you know it kind of squeezed us in that little that niche. And at the end of the day, right, good music is good music, whether it's metal, hip hop, whatever you're listening to, psychedelic banjo, whatever you got going on, right? Well, I, you know, I, I'm sorry for my friends who are so wrapped up into one part of their musical life that they don't know other ways to uh, to you know show uh other sides of their creativity you know uh you know it's, it's still like uh i'll use this band as an as a as a uh example although they're doing something which i'll use as the other example uh you know like for bands that go around and playing songs that they wrote when they were 18 years old right. you know and they're 60 years old uh you know and i, I get that as a nostalgia thing but, you know, at least I like to see, you know, like Keith Morris is doing off as well. He's doing new shit as well. Because, you know, you don't necessarily feel the same way you do when you're 18 years old when you're singing them lyrics. Oh, yeah. Before so, cell phones were even out. Yeah. You, so you brought <laughs> up a really good point we talk about quite often. I mean, I'm a big 80s metalhead, right? That's kind of where I grew up and that's my heart. And, but you got yeah. people like Kip Wing, like Winger singing She's Only 17. And now he's 65 singing that. And it's really strange to creepy about, right yeah that's just flat out creepy dude unless you're in alabama then you're cool <laughs> <laughs> i love it so let's talk about uh about your stuff how did this come about because this is definitely we we're talking about out of the box and creative this is i guess psychedelic banjo is the best way i can put it how did this come about yeah I, I, yeah I, I think uh i'm gonna call it spacecraft for a while until until somebody else like plays it better than me and names it something else. <laughs> right. But you know, I think uh, part of the inspiration and it can't really be as good as anyone else doing the kind of music that they do already. So I might right. as well come up with something that no one's done yet. 
and uh and until someone shows me up on it which i think my neighbor down the street who i just recorded with has already done <laughs> so i might have to pick up the tuba or something i don't know man nice but so where did it i mean i know you've been a banjo player forever obviously you've been playing for years because this is pretty you know talented and intense stuff so how did this whole idea for fungal mountain breakdown come about uh well the fungal mountain breakdown that uh that yeah after my two solo records danny barnes from the bad livers was uh like i've been playing banjo and writing songs and messing around i'm not really a player i'm still trying to play the damn thing i'm a i'm a banjo wrestler mike watt called me a bass wrestler a long time ago i think that fits i'm a banjo wrestler uh so i'll be wrestling it till the day i die because i love it but uh, he, he heard some of my songs and he was like, yeah, it'd be cool to do a little cassette tape with your songs on it. And I'll draw a, a label on it. And, you know, like the old mixtapes and he yeah, made like 200 the of them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So he made it because he, he actually had gotten 50,000 bucks from Steve Martin for banjo excellence. Mm. And he wanted to uh, use that back towards promoting, you know, strange banjo music or or different styles of banjo music because he does his stuff banjo electronica. That was a uh, and barnhouse uh, <laughs> barnyard electronica. That was a uh, influence on what I did in it live and everything. And that guy's got it going on uh, with experimenting with the banjo as well. And he liked my songs and asked me to do that tape. And then after we did it, I started. Uh, liking liking how, how it sounded and he mixed that one and how it came together it was recorded live and that was my first one and uh so i asked if i could put it out you know on vinyl and cd and he said sure i shouldn't have changed the order i did change the order of the songs wish i wouldn't have done that and then that kind of established me as being able to do it and then i did the next record uh that was when the pandemic hit so i was one of the few people that in my world that was doing slow uh solo shit before the pandemic hit. everybody wanted to do solo shit after the pandemic hit. Right. so second album i did uh with the shimmy disc the fungus shui and moved out here and I met up with my neighbor down the hill during the pandemic i kind of cold called uh mike savino otherwise known as tall tall trees my partner in crime on the song you're talking about and uh uh, someone had told me about that. I didn't know. I didn't know this guy, and he didn't know uh, Mike, I guess. And so I, I contacted him. I said, "I'm uh, moving from Texas to Asheville." I said, "There's only room for one of us," because he told me there was another psychedelic banjo player in town. <laughs> and this guy, Mike, was probably like, "What? Who the fuck is this old man?" And uh, uh, so we ended up becoming friends and jamming up here on this deck that I'm on right now during the pandemic when everyone was afraid to get inside a house together. Right. And that's how we got to know each other and, and listen to each other's songs and talked about doing an album together. And uh, Kramer, he's on Joyful Noise and I was on Shimmy Disc and Kramer just moved to Asheville. And before well, he moved here after our session uh, because it's so nice. But don't tell anyone. <laughs> and, <laughs> right. Uh, so he moved out, uh, and so, so he recorded us over at Mike's studio, Galley Tapes, and uh, we didn't know, me and Mike had a bunch of songs that, you know, a lot of them are going to be on my next solo record, that he, we didn't know exactly what he wanted, but he wanted to incorporate a lot of drone and ambient into the music we were doing, and uh, and so you know, people would ask me, he'd get mad, people would be like, how's the record going? I said, I have no idea. And (laughs) now I do. Now now I think it went great. And I'm really, really happy. But Kramer had a big influence in uh, the direction of that record. And uh, me and Mike had some songs that we threw in to go with the instrumental songs that we had on there. And, uh, you know, the first thing he had us do was record uh, 15 minutes at a time of uh, just some ambient stuff. And so we, we got doing that live together. And he edited two and a half minutes of the best parts of those down. And those are in between the songs that we did. And so it's kind of a different format. Uh, it's really like, to me, it's a, it's, it's a, it goes back to album rock to where you can listen to the whole record. It's not meant to be chopped up so much. I mean, the first single we put out was Fungal Mountain Breakdown, which was a six minute long uh, three part uh, instrumental and uh and so you know we have songs with vocals in fact we just finished the video yesterday for the next one which is uh one that mike created uh started out with anyways uh, uh called afterlife and that should be coming out any day now okay. uh uh so that's got vocals in it and the next one will have vocals in it but yeah it's a it's a strange audience to try and uh 
to try and reach because it's not like there's any anybody already out there listening to exactly what we're doing. So, yeah, you're 100 percent right. So here's my next question. And don't take this the wrong way. Right. So, first of all, what kind of expectations were you were you looking for? And second of all, you're 100 percent right on the second part, because I watched it and enjoyed it, but also thought in the back of my head, what the fuck did I just watch? Does that make sense? You just froze. <laughs> you oh. froze like this, saying the fuck. Oh, that was a deep you conversation. There? Yeah, hey. hang on. I lost you. Let's see if we get you back. Hold on. Don't hang up. Hey. Hello. Hey, JD, you there? You froze. Hey, there you are. You, you froze during what the fuck. Oh, so did you, <laughs> did you hear any of that? I heard the what the fuck, and then it, right. and then it, it stopped. I'll go back and edit it. So I said. Yeah, you just do this when you edit it. So I, <laughs> my first part is what kind of expectations you have, right? Because this is not really music for the masses. Second of all, right. I listened to it and I enjoyed it. That's why you, I asked to talk to you. But I also thought in the back of my head, what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> yeah. So as far as the video went, uh, we were, uh, we were, uh, there were some old timers that we were watching some of the old footage of because we we're when we were talking about video stuff. And so we, we basically took some of the, uh, the old, uh, National Film uh, Preservation Society, uh, footage and watched some of that stuff of some of our favorite players and kind of imitated the, uh, uh, the porch jam field of a field, uh, field recorder coming through and recording, uh, you know, some of the locals. Uh, that don't play out of movies or anything. That was the only way they could get, you know, do these. So right. and that's like a 1974 look. And then uh, uh, with all the different breaks in the song, I wanted them to all kind of like represent going to different places. You know, each each break when it comes in, it was to take you somewhere else. Yeah. So we incorporated uh, incorporated that and you know, just uh, modulating uh, the, the 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 parts in there uh, to different chords on each break. And it just took us to different places, and I was lucky enough to. Uh, uh, I exp you know, uh, I know people are down AI, but some of my ideas, and I I uh, messed around with an AI program for some background stuff, and then superimposed stuff on top of the video because uh, I was the one that edited that last one and did the effects on it. Mike did this next one; it's pretty much him uh, doing it. I went over there. I wouldn't. I was like, I wouldn't change a thing. Right. <laughs> but but uh, but yeah, so it's all you know. It's hard to keep people's attention for six minutes. Uh, I like the fact that most folks that I talk to watch it. You know, we're surprised that they could actually watch a six minute long video. Right. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, my wife with the chicken at the end kind of that's the money shot right there. You know? <laughs> yeah, the whole thing I was like, holy moly, this is like some bad mushroom <laughs> trip. Yeah, that's what my friend told me. I said I was so happy to hear that because I was kind of forced into doing Final Cut Pro, which someone gave me. I'd never really used it except for make my movies, uh, so, you know, edit my movies together for live. But uh, uh, he, this guy came over with some real cameras and set them up on stands with two different lenses and helped us out with that. But I usually just did shit on my phone and used an app on my phone. They were pretty good nowadays. Uh, so I had to, you know, wrestle, wrestle Final Cut Pro and AI at the same time right. to do it. It was a, it was a quite a learning lesson, man. But it was a lot of fun, and yeah, we, I think uh, there is a market for it. I don't know what the market is, <laughs> uh, but uh, but you know, uh, you know, yeah, I just think it's like, you know, you just got to be in that mood, or maybe when, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one, man. I, I just it was something we had to get out of us, and it all sounded right when we got done with it. And it sounds right when he listened to it, but I think you have to be maybe it's like that cult following, right? Like the people who watch those, the Kentucky Fried movie or Racerhead or like Rocky <laughs> that sort of thing, right? That's what I'm thinking when I'm watching it. Yeah, well, people used to, you know, think that you know, people and uh, you know, the others is punk rock museum that's out in Las Vegas now and. Uh, I see all these people that are talking that you're like, get, you know, they're all these, there's, they're younger than me. And I feel like I'm punk rock. I'm 55, almost 56. And, uh, butthole surfers were not necessarily a punk band. I would never consider us a punk band. I don't think the, the guys would, but uh, I guess it, everything is kind of grouped into this one genre. Right. To me, we were the kind of music that would piss off punk rockers, you know, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, nothing they were expecting and no, not what they were used to. So I guess, kind of par for course i've never been one to try and uh be involved in stuff that's that's extremely mainstream 
Maybe my band Honky was about the, the closest because it was right after Butthole Surfers and I wanted to have a three-piece boogie band. Me and my friends that started the band, uh, we wanted to just have one that chicks would come out and shake their butts to and not using a bunch of effects. And, you know, just the, the you know, the way we, my ex-father-in-law, rest in peace, used to call rock and roll bass lines was, that he hated were dumb eights. Dumb, 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 right. dumb, dumb, dumb. So I didn't have that as syncopated drums and and bass and the guitar on top, you know, with some tasties. And um, that was about as same as I got, except for now, I think the name Honky is more offensive than Butthole Surfers. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> You'd be Even canceled though, in a minute. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, whatever. I'm sure I should have been canceled a lot of times. But yeah, <laughs> so that's what I was just like, hey, we're, we're three stupid white guys playing music, you know. But uh, but yeah, the people get offense to it. So be it, man. You know. How do you think this translates live, or is that not even a thing? Well, we're uh, we're planning on doing a release at the end of this month, and there will be a taste of what we're going to do live. Uh, I think we'll probably just do a little teaser of it, and then hopefully in fall we're going to take it on the road uh, uh, later in September, maybe October, and. I, I, we haven't really decided how we're going to do it, but I, I see it as our two sets overlapping because I, I definitely can't play. Mike is too good of a player for me, man. You know, he's, he could play on anything I do, I'm sure, but I, yeah, I can't play on his stuff. So it would probably be me playing my set and then him you know, maybe go do a little uh, ambient jam stuff into some of our songs, some ambient jam. And then maybe go into his set. I leave and go sell some t-shirts or something. Oh, so like a little bit of back and forth. Yeah, I think I think maybe a crossover might be the way to do it to where we can, you know, where we would take through our strengths together. So when you said you were you were given a you went and recorded ambient stuff, are you talking about you just went out and recorded? Are you talking about m musical instruments or did you just go out musical like musical no musical instruments like uh, like uh, uh, drone? I should say droning. Uh, uh, droning music, ambient music, because it's not all drone. There's a lot of textures in, in the in the music, so that's why I don't like to say drone because that's a little bit more. There's not any aggress aggressive parts in that, I guess. Uh, this is more like real life bubbling up at you. It's like a a storm rolling in from the south over there, and watching the trees start wiggling, and then all of a sudden these ones over here start wiggling, and and then next thing you know, I'm smoking a joint. <laughs> I love how you got there. That's pretty great. <laughs> that was a natural progression. It's the journey. It's the journey. Nice. Are you um are you writing more stuff? Is this something that's an ongoing thing or is this gonna be like a one off? No, we definitely want to do some more stuff together. My next record is actually uh gonna be on Shimmy Disc and Mike's on it. The he's he plays that because he's so good and he's right down the street. But it's not gonna be a solo solo record. It's all my songs with other people on it. In fact, Paul's on. Uh, the only guitar on there, I think, is Paul. Oh, nice. And yeah, then there's only, and it's got horns, uh, harp, uh, it's got banjo, it's got pedal steel. It's got uh, the my buddy Sam Coombs from uh, uh, John Spencer and uh, Quasi playing some, some, uh, some you know kind of background crunchy synth stuff on some of the shit um it's gonna be basically like two albums in one and one would be some of the outtakes which were too songy for the last record me and mike did together uh because we wrote a bunch going into it right. and so uh then that's gonna be one side is gonna be the more songy a little bit uh a little bit more Mm, I don't know, uh, palatable for most people. Right. And then the other side to the stuff that I put for the Butthole Surfers album that never came out. And that's what I got Paul on two of those songs, or maybe three. He might be on three of them, uh, doing some of his more abstract kind of guitar playing. And, yeah. uh, and, uh, so it's going to be called Grow a Pair. And, uh, it's going to be a, a pair of albums on one, one vinyl. Nice. That's, yeah. good. That's good. You still keep in contact with those guys. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. So I love, I love Paul. Me and Paul talk a lot. I love all the guys. Uh, you know, it's just uh, me and Paul seem to just talk, talk the most. Right. And if I'm being honest, Paul seems, at least creatively, along the same lines of what I see you putting out. So it's very yeah. similar, right? A little bit 
far off to the left, maybe. Yeah, yeah, or to the right. I don't know, whichever way, man. Yeah, you know, whatever way, whatever floats your boat. It all comes <laughs> around to the <laughs> same place. It's the turning. Yeah, <laughs> the journey, right? The, the trees start moving, and then you smoke a joint. And that's it, man. <laughs> So what's next for you then? Are you just uh, you're gonna release another single? You said you got coming up, and then some shows. Yeah, we got two more singles coming out on this one, and the third one comes out. Afterlife should be out next week. Uh, it's it's actually ready now, and the YouTube is up on the private thing, so we know that's good to go. The next one's being worked on now by my friends down in South Georgia. Uh, I, had, well, I asked them to put some input into it. Uh, Sam Balling and his wife Courtney. And uh, then they'll give it to me and I'll put some stuff on top of it. And that should come out uh, when when the album actually comes out. I think I believe that's on the 28th or 29th okay. uh, of this month. And uh, after that, I've got some solo shows spread around. And uh, in July, I'm going to be going off on the road with uh, Josephus and the George Jonestown Massacre. And my friend P.W. Long from uh, one of my favorite bands, Mule. And I love his solo stuff, and he's asked to join us on this. So it'll be us three, and I'll be doing my banjo set. Uh, Preston, of course, will be doing his acoustic set. And then uh, Josephus and those boys will be doing their uh, electric set. And then I'm going to come up at the end and play bass and sing with them as a backing band and do um, a little bit of back catalog from, uh, well, it's going to be about, Two songs from three different bands and a cover. Nice. So you got a lot going on. So I've got I've got two more questions for you. You got it. One, the first one, is that a tattoo on the inside of your hand? Yeah. How much did that hurt? Holy shit. What Can you read it? Like? Can you read it? Uh we got a key. I don't see the other one. No. You can't see it or you can't figure it out? I can't figure it out. Oh. Honky. Oh, Honky. yes. I got it now. Nice. Honky. That's <laughs> an, an old sailor tattoo, believe it or not. But, uh, yeah, it didn't, it didn't hurt so bad, man. In fact, it was more like getting my wife is the one that hit it on me. More like getting a uh, palm massage on that part. I, I don't know. I mean, I have tattoos, but I don't know if I could do that. That looks fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, they make a numbing cream now, she says. I guess. So lastly... How do we get this? How do we get more people to uh, to find you? Because this is something I think you know. Even my metal audience needs to go listen to because it's really good stuff. And outside, well, the- yeah. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it, and thanks for uh, thanks for you know inviting me on here to do this and to talk about it and to invite a new crowd to to listen to it. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, I know you can listen to it on Bandcamp. Uh, it will be up on YouTube. Uh, it'll be link to through my site jdpankis.com which i have tons of uh stuff on even you know jack officer cds that i still have left from way back when uh people are out in the shopping mood you know for father's day or whatever right. i even got crop tops i can't say for women anymore i just got crop tops now. right for whoever it's summertime, right. <laughs> it's summertime but yeah as far as listening uh you can listen for free i think a couple of times on Bandcamp. Uh, definitely stuff will be on Spotify stuff will be all over and uh, the videos will be uh, released as, as many places as we can make them happen awesome. and hopefully hopefully the uh, album will sell like hot cake there you go <laughs> oh, yeah, <hot> cake. <laughs> one, <right. laughs> one big one one, one big, big hot cake great <laughs> and I appreciate you taking the time oh, thanks for you taking the time man appreciate it thank you my friend good luck with everything thanks for your contribution to music be well. Hey, thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time, brother. Cheers. All right, Bruce. Bye, bye. Bye, man. Bye.